They often don't even come out in the interview process. We often don't find them out until months after they're working with us. And we say, why didn't you tell us that in the interview? It would have made a big difference to know that you were running a guild in World of Warcraft, or you were um, advocating through tweets and social media, uh, your hip hop uh, video podcast series, right? So one of the things that we've been trying to figure out is how can we support the youth to know what they know and know how they're learning what they know in our current networked era where they're not just learning at school or through being at Global Kids and other after school programs or digital media, but how it's all interconnected. And the two things I'm going to briefly share with all of you is what we've been doing through both thinking about badges and separately learning maps as two different forms of alternative assessments. <coughs> now, when we talk about badges, something comes to mind quite often for folks. I'm hoping maybe we can help maybe purge it through this experience. When I was putting this together, I just happened to tweet badges, 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 because that's what I was thinking about. And what more than one person wrote back was... Now, for those who are not familiar with it, this is a phrase many of us know from this movie. <laughs> That's from Blazing Saddles, which itself was a parody in that scene of uh, Treasure of the Sierra Madre. <laughs> said at least three times over the last two days. So in our published con public consciousness, badges for many of us represent not just the scene, but the idea of authority. And in fact, in this reference, it's also the absence of authority, right? Because he's saying we don't need the badges. So it rep represents for us police and how we as society put authority in a, a visual representation that one can have and earn to represent having power in our society. Also, in our general understanding, here's a quote from um, 30 Rock. Uh, this, this, if you watch, who here watches 30 Rock? Just get a sense. So this character on the show was saying, I've never quit anything in my life. And her example was, I'm still in Girl Scouts. I have 9,000 badges. <laughs> and, and the absurdity of the statement is that she would still be in Girl Scouts and still collecting them. So in many ways, badges are also associated not just with authority, but also with youth. It's something to be left behind. It's something you do when you're a kid, not when you get older. And finally, badges equal misdirecting the masses. This is from a New Yorker. As many of us know, once something is referenced culturally in the New Yorker, it means it's starting to tip. For those who can't read it, it says, before they're slaughtered, each one gets an achievement award. <laughs> now, these three things that we see often in, in popular society and popular thinking about badges, what we associate, might actually be relevant for us at Global Kids uh, because we can redefine them. One, it's about redefining authority when you use badges. It also is valuable for affirming use interests and also for providing scaffolded learning. Uh, hopefully not for slaughter in a cow house, but... Uh, in, in our systems that we have for educating young people. Now, <clears throat> there's a new MacArthur um, funded working paper which was just released a week or two ago um, where you can find on dmailcentral.net on badges um, from which was produced by a combination of collaboration in peer the Peer to Peer University and the Mozilla Foundation. And the way they define badges within that, for specifically badges for learning, is as a symbol or indicator of an accomplishment, skill, quality, or interest. And they looked at how badges are used at things like the Boys and Girl Scouts, for training divers in a, in a wide range of contexts. And what they had to say of their value is that they motivate learning, they signify community, they signal achievement, and that those three of become things that help us think about how to use badges to guide youth through a learning environment, to give them a sense of identity in that space, and then to be a form of assessment that can travel with them when they move outside that space. Now, Global Kids has been using badges for about three years for learning. Um, we developed our first system at our high school in Brooklyn, the High School for Global Citizenship, um, to support youth to recognize, talk about, and demonstrate a range of digital literacies. This is actually a, the digital transcript that was developed based on uh, the models developed by Henry Jenkins and the folks at Project Media Literacy. The system was later taken to scale within the New York City Public Library, adapted for use within a K through six school in New Orleans, which we're now developing for two other schools as well. This experience also informed a badge implementation to train youth to become serious game designers in partnership with Mouse, Mouse Squad, and most recently to assess, direct, and engage interest-driven learning for the American Museum of Natural History for an eco-literacy project. I'm now going to a little bit into each of these. 
Um, so this was the transcript, and as you'll see, there's corners. So for each badge, for say networking or simulation, you don't just get the badge, you have to earn the corners. One of the corners represents the ability to recognize the literacy when you see it. One of the badges represents the literacy when you um, can talk about it, and one when you can do it. And that represented the whole, the whole pool. Next slide. Okay, let me come out of this. And my machine's frozen. Is it running off a of GPS? Oh, okay. And what I'm going to do now is show a very brief video. None of my kids. Um, uh, is show how the youth at the end of the program incorporate their trans their their uh, transcript earned badges into a portfolio that each individual youth curates to talk about not just what badges they earn, but how they understand them and how they relate to the work they did. We are playing by technical problems today, aren't we?
then when we processed it, he made it really clear. His experience in school, his experience in the Y, have a really big divide. There's no connection between the two. It's like he's having two different learning experiences. And part of what we're trying to do when we work with youth like this is help them learn how to make those connections, if the adult educators are not. And, we, and these are working here with youth at the New York New Youth City Learning Network, where we're trying to work at the institutional level to help make those connections. And what the youth then finally do in the process is identify what they have brought into the program here with Global Kids that they're taking from each of the locations on their node. So we can learn more about what they're bringing into the program, and they can see, start seeing those connections. There's something we do at the end of the program, but I'm out of time. So I'm just going to show you the last slide and say that we also use this when people uh, apply for jobs at Global Kids. As I mentioned earlier, it's not just the youth, but also applicants. So these are what we ask for from people, to, to make your learning map and share it with us. And then we get the resumes and we get the cover letters later. And this has been a tremendously useful process for us to get a better sense of who people are who want to work with us. And I think, because uh, of time, I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm now going to see if we can pull up.